Hey, Bayek, it's me. Well, in today's video, uh, I'm continuing my look at Hitchcock films. Yes, you're saying, but he finished the Masterpiece Collection. I did, I finished that box set, but I've got another one. Yes, it's only got three films in it, but hey, they're good ones as well. So, this is Strangers on a Train from 1951. Um... It's a psychological thriller with quite a bit of humour and the underlying comedy uh, in there, uh, as well as very dark concepts, you could say, as well. Um, it's got 101 minutes long, um, and it's 98% on um, Rotten Tomatoes. I think this reflects that a lot of critics just do love this film as well. It was seen as a return to form in many ways. Um, some of the previous ones were not seen quite as good. Um, and of course, we are going into the period when he starts really getting to his height. Um, this is 1951. And um, uh, I think that is very much reflected in the critics' view. Uh, now, the screenplay... Is interesting. We've got two names on the screenplay. We've got Raymond Chandler and Senzi Amanda, or uh, Amanda, um, who was a relatively new um, writer. She was, and uh, this was a big break for her. Um, now, Raymond Chandler, everyone going, yes, it is the Raymond Chandler, but um, Hitchcock. Didn't get on. He didn't like the script. He totally wanted it changed. And he, he basically sacked him. He fired him. Warner Brothers were not pleased. That's why his name has to be on there. Uh, though it's very different. And he brought in this new writer. And she did a great job. It was a massive thing for her. It would have been as a career thing to have this. Uh, yeah, this is great. And um, it is a very good script. Uh, apparently, Hitchcock just told her what the story was about. That's it. And she worked on that. And obviously, with Hitchcock, he puts in input as well within the script. And, um, yeah, it just it, it works so well, the script. It's based on a, a novel which um, he picked up and bought at some time, as he often did. Um, the rights for these didn't pay, a, I don't think, a great deal. Uh, and the novel was Strangers on a Train by Patricia um, Highsmith. And uh, the the novel apparently is very dark, very different in tone to this one. Um, now, um, the um music is by dimitri teamokin um who was very much involved in um westerns famous westerns like um high noon gunfight at the ok corral rio bravo apparently all these loads more of these westerns and there he is doing this one and it's a very good job. Um, now, there were two endings in this, uh, which is interesting. Two endings. Um, one that considered the American one and one considered the British one. Um, I don't, I'm not... I'm, I think one is considered a bit more darker than the other, but it's, a, it's an interesting, very interesting both endings. It's not that really... I don't think it affects the film too much. Um, but yeah, uh, on this restored version, we get this e extra bit of the ending, um, on there. And I think that actually, I can see why it's in there. Definitely. Uh, it, I think it really just sort of underlines everything. Um, now uh, the other 
part and part as usual with a Hitchcock film is locations. And it's again, he's got one of Hitchcock's favourite sort of subjects and things. His trains. Have we noticed trains pop up quite a lot? He went to New York um, and at Penn Station recorded. I think they were on a six um, day filming there. And also uh, they did filming at um, a railroad station uh, in um, Danbury, uh, Connecticut, Connecticut, apparently. Um, then there's the amusement park which is very much important part of the ending, um, the closing scenes are very important to that. Uh, and um, there was filming done in California on that, um, at uh, Canoga Park. But also they built in the studio uh, where the carousel um particularly in the ending uh was very much more it was they they couldn't have done it i don't think any other way than constructing it in the studio it's very important part special effects as you could say that are used which are obviously practical effects which are really important to the f filming they could only do in the studio um i think that's very true also there's um the tennis club, we get uh, filming again in um, New York and also in uh, California, both mixed in together. Um, I think that's the sort of major sort of um, locations that are in the film. Uh, so what? makes this sort of important for Hitchcock, I think, is that he loved this. He absolutely loved this story and he was really happy. He was enthusiastic. I think it was like we'd seen before. He wasn't quite as into this. And this was like, yes, and it's reflected as we see in his career. Uh, how these suddenly we get started to get a real series of really good films. And he was so enthusiastic about this film that is reflected in the direction. Uh, well, let's have a look at the cast. Uh, we've got Farley Granger playing Guy Haynes. Um, excellent in the role. Uh, he had appeared in Rope, so another Hitchcock film in 1948. I think that's why he chose him for this. Um, he was also in uh, quite a popular film, Hans Christian Andersen, 1952. Um, he was also in a uh, horror film, Something Creeping in the Dark, 1971, which was an, an Italian one. It's interesting, quite a few Ita uh, uh, American actors and actresses went over to Italy and did Italian horror films. Uh, another one was So Sweet, So Dead, 1972, which was an Italian one. And also he was in an American one just a, a bit later on than that uh, called The Prowler from 1981. And that was an, uh, an American slasher film. Very interesting career. Anyhow, that's Farley Granger. And then we've got... Ruth Roman, who plays Anne Martin. Now, what I've read about this, um, I mean, she's good in it, but Hitchcock didn't like her that much. He felt she'd been imposed upon him by the studio. It wasn't his, he didn't, I just don't think he, he, he made that quite clear that it wasn't his choice. And we get this with Hitchcock sometimes. He's not always such a nice person, <laughs> uh, you know, behind all the humour and bravo, bravado. He can be quite uh, not nice. And he apparently wasn't to her at all on this. Uh, now, 
she was in um, the Shanghai story, 1954. Um... She was also that that was quite an important Shanghai story, film noir story. Um, she was in Joe Macbeth. Now we've come across this one before, nineteen fifty-five. It's a a version of Macbeth done in his gangster film. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and do you know I've not seen it, but I keep coming across it. It's, it sounds really interesting, doesn't it? And then we got um the baby. From 1973, uh, which was a horror film. And another horror film was The Killing Kind from 1973. Um, yeah, she had uh, various films like this. That they're the ones that um, I just noticed and stood out. Then we've got, I think this is a, a very important role in the film, is Robert Walker who plays Bruno Anthony. Um, Bruno Anthony, of course, is key to this film in many ways. Um, he... Um, films that he stand, stood out in was Since You Went Away, which was in 1944, and um, Vengeance Valley, uh, 1951. Um the sad part of all this is that um, he died in the year this was released, not long after. It, it, it did um, have another film released in 1952 um, posthumously. But, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, um, apparently he had a lot of uh, psych psychological, psychiatric... Uh, problems, alcoholism. Um, and it's interesting because the character he's playing is a very sort of disturbed character. One wonders what do it, playing this character did to his uh, mental health anyway. Um, but that's just an interesting idea. You can't say that, that he, he contributed to it. But it's interesting that he, he died not long after. You know, obviously these... Uh, were ongoing lifelong problems that he had um and of course the alcoholism and that uh, but yeah that's it's quite sad to to know that um then we've got uh leo g carroll who plays uh senator martin he was somebody who hitchcock obviously liked a lot uh he appeared in six Hitchcock films. He played, uh, he, he was in Rebecca, 1940. He was in um, Suspicion, 1941. He was in Spellbound, 1945. Very popular one, that one. He was in uh, The Paradigm Case, 1947. And then perhaps the most famous one, uh, of these films, North by Northwest, 1959, which we will be reviewing soon, maybe a couple of weeks, it'll pop up. Uh, yes. Um, so, uh, somebody who Hitchcock obviously liked, um, as in, in, in part of this film. And then uh, we've got um, Patricia Hitchcock, his daughter, playing uh, Barbara Morton, um most notable she had a lot of small roles in films and that but the most notable film that of her father's that she was in she was in psycho and it was a bit of a role you know it wasn't massive but it was there she was in it um that was 1960 of course psycho which is one of the greatest films that he ever made you know um yeah uh and then um, we've got Casey Rogers, who played Miriam Joyce Haynes, um, and she was famous uh, for being in Bewitched. Yes, Bewitched, which ran between 1966 and 1972. She was in 33 episodes playing the second Mrs. Uh, Louise Tate. So, 
they are massive career uh, in TV. That is a very big. Um, so the story begins on a train, and we see them again. There's a lot of themes here running. We see both going onto the train. Oh, we don't actually see all their bodies. We see their feet going in, and then these two strangers. One is a amateur tennis player who uh, has ambitions to be a politician uh, after this. The other is a rich psychopath. This a rich psychopath um, is, well, a dangerous man, very dangerous. And he strikes up a conversation uh, with the tennis player and he eventually after talk, he seems to know a lot about this him. he recognizes him and he says to him oh um why don't we exchange murders yes like you do you know you know uh, oh why don't we exchange murders well, fair enough why not um and um from this he says well i'll tell you what I'll get rid of your wife because they um he knows that he he is um very much in love with this senator's um daughter and then um he'll be free to marry her because she won't divorce his wife is not a nice woman at all um not nice and then um get rid of her but in exchange he says oh you can get rid of my dad um he doesn't like his dad and uh he wants so so he says then you know nobody's going to suspect strangers for murdering each other so we have this sort of theme again about doubles and um hitchcock looking at consequences of actions and it's all on a train which is uh, interesting um so from this it all starts to unfold when he goes ahead and uh basically the tennis player um guy he really starts to worry about this because you know he just thinks he's a nutter and wants to get away from him and get on with his life and pretend all oh, no, those that didn't, didn't happen but this, he's not going to do that. And he does murder his wife. And of course he expects him then to murder his um, father. And wow. <laughs> and with the, it's, it, it's really, it gets very dark really, but there's still this humor there. There's still a lot of humor, um, but it's a great film. The way the story unravels, and just gets more and more um, going. It just it's 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 wonderful. There's so many things in it. Um, and from a director's viewpoint, um, this has such amazing um, scenes in it. Um, the cinematography again is amazing. On this, um, it just that like, there's a scene with. Um, the murder, the actual murder of the strangulation of his wife. And we see it through these glasses. Yeah, the camera. See, we see it there through the glasses. What a, what a film. But there's so many more scenes. This is Hitchcock again, just showing what a master he was and um, how he creates all these wonderful um visual scenes that we see and the story i think you know and um yeah the we should enjoy that I, there was one thing i forgot to mention and i should um have mentioned it. 11 minutes we see hitchcock yes 11 minutes getting uh onto the train uh carrying um a big double bass you can't mistake it. You you can't help but smile when you see that with all these situations. There he is. So it's there very much 
yeah, yeah. Fantastic film. Um, again, another Hitchcock film. Discussing ways to kill. It pops up in so many things. He just loves the people talking about how you would kill somebody. And this comes up again. But it is, it is really wonderful. And I think um, Robert Walker, as I say, is just absolutely amazing as Bruno. Wow. It is. You know, that's why I'm kind of shocked about you know that he died not long after this film you know in the same year you know he was making another film wow uh but his performance is just just amazing it's so yeah it's really there it really is there's so much underlying stuff with hitchcock it's a film that you can watch and watch again and think oh yes so all typical Hitchcock themes are in there, and um, I think it's this is is really a film that you want to watch again, you know, because you think, wow, yeah, uh, and and also you're laughing as well at the same time. I mean, that is the ending, as I say, with the what you could describe as the special effects um, on the carousel, just amazing the way it's filmed. Uh, absolutely, just wonderful. I can't talk enough about it, but I think I better shut up now. Um, just before I go, uh, what I'll do is, this is the actual um, DVD, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, lad, from the box set. Um, this is the Blu-ray from the box set, and um, there's some nice extras. The Universal on these um, films did such a lot of good documentaries and little, you know, snippets of things. Oh, wonderful! Absolutely, the extras are great. Um, this is, is this is the actual box set that it's um, from. No, this is the actual box set with the three films in. But hey, great. I've really enjoyed that. And we'll continue next week with the next film. Yes, which I think may be Dial M for Murder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyhow, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and we'll let you know uh, when I produce these videos. And have a look at my playlist. You can see all the things I've done. Um, you can see more Hitchcock if you, Hitchcock if you want. Bayek, you can and if you like this particular video please give it a like it gets it out into youtube and all that algorithm stuff and hopefully more people might enjoy it who knows perhaps they won't and if you've got any comments please put your comments down i really do love to read your comments Bayek, it costs no you can't say fair than that can you nowadays Bayek. so that's it all i gotta say is i'll see thee i'll see thee again <laughs>